Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin. Welcome back to another episode of Exante. Today we're going to discuss the case Hexion v. Huntsman. This case was heard in the Delaware Court of Chancery in the year 2008. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So Hexion and Huntsman are both chemical companies. And Hexion wanted to buy Huntsman. Um, Huntsman's a Delaware corporation. Hexion was largely held by a private equity, equity firm called Apollo Management. So Hexion you know, begins to kind of flirt with Huntsman. Um, they talk about some deal terms. It never really comes through. Uh, then in 2007, late 2007, this merger begins to emerge um, where a deal takes shape where it's going to be a $28 per share purchase agreement. Hexion is going to purchase Huntsman at $28 per share. And a deal is valued close to $10.6 billion. So it's a sizable uh, merger. Now, in this merger agreement, there's a couple of terms um, that are key uh, front and center in this case. Um, the first is the material adverse event clause. And what that clause is, is it's just something that would say, all right, if something crazy happens between signing and closing this deal, we can terminate the merger. So if something just totally wild, maybe like COVID-19 happens um, during signing and closing, well, we can call off the merger. So that's the material event, adverse event clause. And there's also something in this merger that's interesting. It's just a no financing out, which basically means that if Hexion can't get the financing that it needs, it still has to go through with this deal. Um, normally, people would put in some type of contingency there, some type of condition, which would say, <clears throat> you know, if financing doesn't come through, then I can get out. Uh, that is often something you might see in smaller deals like, you know, buying a home or something like that. Those two are front and center here. Uh, well, you know, this deal gets signed up. And before it's closed, 2008 happens, right? And the whole economy is in downturn. Everything goes terrible. Um, Huntsman's first quarter earnings in 2008 were, you know, just objectively bad. Um, the numbers are significantly down. And so Hexion is thinking to itself, well, we not, might not want to buy Huntsman anymore. So how do we get out of this? And so they lawyer up and, and they hire um, Wachtell and and, uh, and some consultants and they start to pick their brains. How could we get out of this deal? You know, um, It doesn't seem favorable to us. Huntsman had a lot of negotiating leverage when we signed it, but is there any way we can get out of this? Um, and so they begin you know, looking through uh, the deal, seeing how they could get out. Well, their best you know, option is to say Huntsman is insolvent. And if Huntsman's insolvent, then we don't have to close the deal. Well, because maybe that's a material adverse event. Maybe we can't get financing. It's not really a super slam dunk argument, but that's their that's their move. And so they go ahead and hire a financing expert that takes a look at Huntsman and says, yeah, this company's insolvent. Um, it's like hoo-ha, you know. The expert that I hired says it's insolvent uh, right after 2008. And so Hexion sues Huntsman and says, yep, but we want out of the deal. Um, and so they file the lawsuit. Now, this, as this litigation progresses, Huntsman says, no, we're, gonna, we're actually going to uh, counterclaim. And we're going to sue you. Um, this was a knowing and intentional breach of the contract. And, and that's important because a knowing and intentional breach uh, under this merger agreement provides for uncapped damages. So any of the other breaches that are enumerated in the contract, the damages would be liquidated at $325 million. But if it's knowing and intentional, uh, there's a provision in the merger that says th these are uncapped damages. So you're going to owe us a heck of a lot more because you intentionally breached this merger agreement when you tried to find a way out by you know, hiring this financing expert that was going to do your bidding, say the company's insolvent, and try and get out of here. So that's the fact scenario generally that the Delaware Court of Chancery is presented with. And so first, it's, it's going to deal with this material adverse event clause. And... The specific language of this contract is very important um, as any contract case. But what it, this material adverse event clause says is, you know, here's the things that might be a material adverse event. But what does not constitute a material adverse event is changes in the financing conditions, changes in the markets. So it's essentially saying there's some carve outs of this material adverse event clause. We're saying certain scenarios. You know, you might want to argue that they're going to be MAEs, but it's not going to be a material adverse event, right? So that <clears throat> that is the specific provision that's doing a lot of work in this contract. And the court looks at that and says, yeah, this says that, you know, if there's a change in the financing conditions overall that impact the market, well, then it's not going to allow 
Hexion to get out of this deal. That's not a material adverse event. These carve outs are doing a lot of work. Also, the court kind of just generally says the party who wants out of a deal because of an MAE has the burden of proof in, in proving that an MAE took place, right? And so that is burden is on Hexion. It says Hexion cannot carry that burden. There's also another interesting line about how the court says we would consider something that is an MAE as an event that would impact the business for years, not months, not some type of short term thing. And so the court says essentially is saying Huntsman is still a viable company. It's still a good company. You signed it at the bad at a bad time. Yeah, it had bad earnings in quarter one. Um, we have you know dueling experts upon how bad those are. But essentially, this looks like it's going to be a short term thing. This doesn't look like it's going to be a long term big change to Huntsman uh, that would materially adversely impact this this company and this acquisition. So that's the first thing they say. So there's no MAE. What does that mean for Hexion? It means there is um, if there was an MAE, they could get out with paying get out of the deal without paying any damages. But because there was not an MAE, it looks like, okay, we're going to have to pay some type of damages, whether that's the liquidated 325 or the uncapped high. Um, but as soon as you read that, that's bad for Hexion. So then we go and the court analyzes whether this was a knowing and intentional breach, which would provide for uncapped damages. And ultimately, court comes down saying, yes, this was a knowing and intentional breach by Hexion. They went out and hired this insolvency expert to basically you know, send this letter around to the banks to try and screw this deal up. That's a knowing and intentional breach. Um, they also dragged their feet on antitrust regula uh, and the regulatory approvals that were needed for this deal. So yeah, this was a knowing and intentional breach and there's no financing out anyway. So it's like, what were you really doing with this insolvency thing, guys? Because there's no financing out. Even if the company is insolvent, you know, maybe that's an MAE, but we said it's not. So as you have your reasonable best efforts to acquire this financing under the deal, and you didn't go through with that. You didn't go and try to find financing. As a matter of fact, you did the opposite. You tried to thwart financing um, by providing these insolvency opinion uh, to the banks. So ultimately, that's the case. Uh, the court says, hey, Hexion, you know, you need to try and find some financing. You need to try and close this deal um, and is scorning it, essentially. And Hexion reads this opinion and is like, okay, we're out. Uh, they settle this case with Huntsman for a billion dollars, um, which is much above what the capped, the liquidated $325 million damages were, um, suggesting that, yeah, even Hexion thought this was a knowing and intentional breach after reading this opinion. 